Gotta buy them all book haul. Turn it, pages keep keep turning. The pages, time flies when you better read it. Book Outlet just had a Black Friday sale where all of their already amazingly priced books were 25% off. So I got some things to show you. Let's get started. First off, the reason for the purchase was My Plain Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. And this is a Jane Eyre retelling. I absolutely loved the My Lady Jane by them, and so I really wanted to read this book. As I did with my last book haul, I'm just going to read the back of the books because it's summarized better than I could ever do not having read the book, and will just be better for everyone involved, so. <coughs> A fantastic, romantic, comedic, entirely faithful, but not really, retelling of Jane Eyre. You may think you know the story. After a miserable childhood, penniless orphan Jane Eyre becomes governess at Thornfield Hall. There she meets one dark, brooding Mr. Rochester. Despite their significant age gap, yikes, and his uneven temper, double yikes, they fall in love, and reader, she marries him. We have a different story to tell. So excited about this. Next we have Fire and Heist by Sarah Beth Durst. And honestly, I really just love this title. Dragons. What is it about? Leading your first heist is a major milestone in Sky Hawkins' family. Even more so than learning to walk, talk, or do long division. It's a chance to gain power and acceptance within society. But stealing your first treasure can be complicated. Especially when you're a wyvern, a human capable of transforming into a dragon. Embarking on a life of crime is never easy, and Skye's mission uncovers deep secrets about the mother who recently went missing, the real reason her boyfriend broke up with her, and a valuable jewel that could restore her family's wealth and rank in their community. With a handpicked crew by her side, Skye knows she has everything she needs to complete her first heist and get back the people she loves in the process. But instead, she ends up discovering a dark truth about where dragon society a truth that is more valuable and dangerous than gold and jewels could ever be. Sounds fantastic. Next, The Lady Rogue by Jen Bennett. Also has a dragon on it. Some legends never die. Traveling with her treasure hunting father has always been a dream for Theodora. She read every book in his library, wields an impressive knowledge of the world's most sought after relics, and has all the ambition in the world. What she doesn't have is her father's permission. That honor goes to her father's 18-year-old protege, a once-upon-a-time love of Theodora's life, Huck Gallagher, where she's left to sit alone in hotel... Wait, what? Ah, she doesn't have her father's permission. Okay. That honor goes to her father's 18-year-old protege, and once-upon-a-time love of Theodora's life, Huck Gallagher, while she's left to sit alone in a hotel in Istanbul. Until Huck arrives from an expedition without her father and enlists Theodora's help in rescuing him. Armed with her father's travel journal, the reluctant duo learns that her father has been digging up information on a legendary magical ring that once belonged to Vlad the Impaler, aka the real-life Dracula, and that just might be the key to finding him. Journeying into Romania, Theodora and Huck embark on a thrilling adventure through gothic villages and dark castles in the misty Carpathian mountains to recover the notorious ring. But they aren't the only ones searching. A secretive and dangerous occult society with a powerful link to Vlad Dracula himself wants it too, and they will go to any length, including murder, to possess it. Sounds very interesting. Next, Seafire by Natalie C. Parker. I've been seeing this book everywhere on Instagram, and I have to admit, it sounds pretty good. A warlord kill... <laughs> A warlord killed Caledonia's parents and kidnapped her brother. Now, on the deadly bullet seas, Captain Caledonia Styx and her all-female crew are ready for revenge. After her family is killed by corrupt warlord Eric Althair and his bloodthirsty army of bullets, Caledonia Styx is left to chart her own course on the dangerous and deadly seas. She captains her ship, the Moors Navis, with a crew of girls and women just like her who have lost their families and homes because of Arik and his men. The crew has one mission, stay alive. Stay alive. And take down Arik's armed and armored fleet. But when Caledonia's best friend and second in command barely survives an attack, thanks to help from a bullet looking to defect, Caledonia finds herself questioning whether to let him join their crew. Is this boy the key to taking down Arik Althair once and for all? 
Or will he threaten everything the women of the Mars and Havis have worked for? Another book that I've been seeing around everywhere is Sea Witch by Sarah Henning. This is a Little Mermaid retelling about Ursula. And I do love me some Little Mermaid. Don't love Ursula, but you know, I'm curious. I'm curious. Ever since her best friend Anna drowned, Evie has been an outcast in her small fishing town. A freak. A curse. A witch. They're not kidding when they called me well a witch. Then a girl with an uncanny resemblance to Anna appears on the shore, and though the girl denies it, Evie is convinced that her best friend survived. And as the two girls catch the eyes and hearts of two charming princes, Evie believes that she might finally have a chance at happily ever after. But her new friend has secrets of her own. She can't stay in Havenstead, or, two, or on two legs, unless Evie helps her. Now Evie will do anything to save her friend's humanity and her prince's heart, harnessing the power of her magic, her ocean, and her love, until she discovers, too late, what she has bargained away. Wait, so is this Little Mermaid or Ursula? Now I'm confused and intrigued. And then we have Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston. Ashley Poston is the author of Geekerella, which I really enjoyed. I didn't realize she wrote sci-fi fantasy type books, so when I saw this, I was very excited. 17-year-old Anna is a scoundrel by nurture... What? <laughs> 17 year old Anna is a scoundrel by nurture and an outlaw by nature. Found as a child drifting through space with a sentient android called Do9, Anna was saved by a fearsome space captain and the grizzled crew she now calls family. But Do9, one of the last remaining illegal metals, has been glitching, and Anna will stop at nothing to find a way to fix him. Anna's desperate effort to save Do9 leads her on a quest to steal the coordinates of a lost ship that could offer all the answers. But at the last moment, a spoiled iron blood boy, whatever that means, beats Anna to her prize. He has his own reasons for taking the coordinates, and he doesn't care what he'll sacrifice to keep them. And when everything goes wrong, she and the Iron Blood end up as fugitives on the run. Now their entire kingdom is after them, and the coordinates, and not everyone wants them captured alive. What they find in a lost corner of the universe will change their lives and unearth the dangerous secrets. But when a darkness from Anna's past returns, she must face an impossible choice. Does she protect a kingdom that wants her dead? or save the metal boy she loves. I feel like this gave away a lot of the plot, so hopefully there are still some surprises left. And the next four books are actually by the same author, Frances Hardinge. This was the author of Deep Light, which I read recently and really, really enjoyed. I thought the writing, there's a bug on my ceiling. And the world building was fantastic, and so I was very excited to read more from her. So I have, Fly by Night and Fly Trap, which are a series, possibly a duology, not exactly sure. I think they're middle grade fantasy. Everybody knew that books were dangerous. Read the wrong book, it was said, and the words crawled around in your brain on black legs and drove you mad, wicked mad. Mosca Mai's father insisted on teaching her to read, even in a world where books are dangerous, regulated things. Eight years later, Quilliam Mai died, leaving behind an orphan daughter with an inauspicious name and an all-consuming hunger for words. Trapped for years in the care of her cruel Uncle Westerly and Aunt Bryony, Mosca leaps at the opportunity for escape, though when it comes in the form of a sneaky swindler, Eponymous Clint, <laughs> as she travels the land with Clint and her pet goose, Saracen, Mosca begins to discover complicated truths about the world she inhabits and the power of words. Sounds pretty neat. And as I said, Flytrap is its sequel. The next book I got by Frances Hardinge is Gullstruck Island. On Gullstruck Island, legend has it that the volcanoes are not just active, but alive. Anger them and pay the price. Keep them happy and enjoy their protection. These legends become the guiding force for a quiet, near-invisible Hathen when she strikes out on a quest to save the island. Oh, her name is Hathen. These legends become the guiding force for quiet, near-invisible Hathen when she strikes out on a quest to save the island. Hathen's sister, Arlo, is believed to be a lost. The lost are held sacred on Gullstruck, for they can send their senses away from their bodies. If she is a lost, Arlo can read messages across the island. She can hear whispers in the corners of private rooms. She can smell a storm brewing miles away, all from her beachside hut. 
But the question remains, is Arlo really a lost? When all the lost drop dead, except Arlo, she and Hathen are swept into a grand conspiracy that leads them to the most sinister depths and heights of the island. Ooh. And the cover is pretty cool. Look at that. And last but not least, also by Frances Hardinge, is The Lie Tree. Oh, this doesn't have a description. It's just a bunch of praise. No. Okay, so from what I remember about the lie tree description, it's about a tree that can tell you... People whisper lies into the tree and it can like tell you truths and it's a murder mystery and it sounds very cool and atmospheric. That's all I really remember from the description because I thought it was on the back here. But apparently just got a bunch of awards. And it sounds really interesting. It's also like a Victorian time period, I believe, and I think it's it's also a YA book. YA fantasy, kind of creepy, murder mystery type book with this like creepy magical tree. So I'm very interested. And those were all the books that I got from Book Outlet. I'm so excited to read them all. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books or which ones sound most interesting to you. And I will see you next time in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!